Downtown condo owners are all heading for the exit at the exact same time. And simultaneously, we have the lowest amount of buyers for the downtown condo market right now. Look, I don't mean to sound like, you know, an alarmist or trying to spread fear, but I have some pretty damning data and charts I'm going to share with you that make me personally very, very concerned about the well-being of the downtown Toronto condo space and the market as a whole. Plus, you know, because now I have access to that data, I dug into deeper of how many of the downtown condo owners who sold are actually losing money. And you know what? It's going to surprise you. So make sure you stay tuned. Now, if you are concerned about your own downtown Toronto condo, after seeing all the data I'm going to present to you, and you're just not really sure what to do, you can book a call with me using the link that's right here. It's www.chatwithzen.com. Simply click on the date and a time that works best for you. And then when you see the prop, fill in your name, email, mobile phone number, and a question you have for me, and then we'll chat then. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Properties TV. My name is Zen, and I run and operate a Remax in the greater Toronto area on top of making awesome educational real estate content just like this one for you. And if you're enjoying the content I'm putting out there right now for your real estate journey, make sure I mean spread the knowledge by smashing the like button and subscribing to the Prime Properties channel. Thank you very much. That's greatly appreciated. Now, I've you know, always followed and watched the downtown Toronto condo space, like very, very like detailed and vigorously since my entire career. I also started my career leasing out uh, condos in the downtown condo space, being like a CL1 area. And I also grew up in the area. So like I watched all the nightclubs become condos, right? And I could name some of them, not all of them, I don't remember all of them, but you get my point, right? So when I personally start seeing some alarming numbers, I immediately had to do a little bit more like digging into what I thought was happening. And it doesn't look good. Like it doesn't look great. So let's just kind of map out what downtown Toronto is. And in this kind of video, I'm using the C01 area, which essentially is bound by on the south side, Lake Ontario. And you want to be east of like, you know, Dufferin slash the train tracks, south of Bloor and essentially west of Young. That is the downtown Toronto space. So in that component or in that kind of area right now, we have nine months of inventory, meaning if nothing comes on the market right now at the pace that condos are being sold, it's going to take nine whole months to absorb all that inventory. Nine is a historic number. It's the highest we've ever seen, ever. So just let that sink in for a second. Let me show you how we got to nine months of inventory. You can see in this chart here, the number of listings in the downtown area, again, the CO1 area, increased by over 250 new listings a week, which is really, really high. And this was in September. Now it continued into October, not at the rate that, you know, we got in September of like 250, but it's still holding fairly firm at 200 a week, which is a lot, right? Then you compare it to this chart here, which shows the sales, which are essentially very anemic. You know, starting off in the fall market, you have about 50 a week, and then now it's something to slide to like 30 to 40. And that is how you get to nine months of inventory. Very little sales and a ton of inventory coming out. And when it compounds over and over again consistently, this is how you're gonna have more inventory and it's gonna outpace the amount of sales we have. Now, this chart over here is the historic months of inventory in the downtown Toronto condo space. And historically speaking, like since the data has collected, so essentially to like 1996, right? Now you do have to keep in mind in 96, there were barely any condos in the downtown area. It was essentially full of parking lots and you could really only see the Rogers Center or Sky Dome, right? And the CN Tower. So you can see that if I plot the October uh, nine months event on this chart, it's gonna be the highest we've ever seen. Yeah, it beat out the pandemic, which seems like nothing if you look at the chart compared to where we are right now, which is absolutely wild. It also beats out the record previously held in the great financial crisis. And it also trumps dot-com bubble in the early 2000s for those of us who do not remember that. So those were the major times in which we saw the downtown condo space, like months of inventory, spike up to basically essentially what is a buyer's market, which is above six months of inventory. 
So right now it's basically putting us officially in a buyer's market for downtown condos. Now I'm gonna remind most people because most people have short term memory. Do you remember three ish years ago, how bad the pandemic was that nobody wanted to live in a condo, whether it was buying or renting because you know, nobody wanted to be close to one another, right? So just remember that moment if you can right now from a month of inventory perspective, it's worse. Yeah. That's how little buyers there are relative to the amount of stuff coming out. It's ridiculous. Now, fun fact, um, if you see this chart, do you know what happens after all of these massive like months of inventory increase? I call them like spikes. And let me preface this, okay, before it gets clipped and taken up for a wrong way. I personally think right now, structurally in the economy, it's different from those three other times because of how high inflation is. But after the dot com, after the GFC, after the pandemic, interest rates dropped significantly like really significantly, basically almost all down to zero. And I'm not saying this is going to happen hundred percent because we had this massive spike in months of inventory and those are not good correlation, but that is essentially what I would say everyone that owns downtown condos is waiting for because it did rescue the downtown condo market and prices went up afterwards. Right? So that's kind of what people are waiting for. Now, obviously, I'm a huge you know, numbers geek, right? So I dug into uh, the sales uh, last month in October to see kind of like who, who is selling what they look like, right? And of the properties you can see in this chart over here, about 77% of them were either owner occupied, meaning the person selling it lived there, or it was vacant, they used to live there, or it used to be tenanted. Now, this is very common because vacant properties can be staged. And you know, if it's owner occupied, like they live in there, they can generally make it more presentable and it'll sell better. That's why I'm not surprised 70% of the profits that sold were vacant or owner occupied. Now, I also looked into the profits of the sold properties, which by the way, is a lot of work. So hats off to our team for compiling all of this data for me to use. And you can see in this chart over here, the average profit for those who sold was about $260,000. Yeah, it's quite a lot of money. And they held it on average for about eight years and three or three, four months or so, right? Which is pretty good. Now do remember that a lot of these properties were purchased with leverage, meaning with like mortgage 20% down. So the ROI or return on investment is probably very high. Now I will note when I was analyzing some of these numbers, the duration in which the sellers held on to, I would say is a little bit on the low side, like the eight in eight years and four months or so because some of them bought during pre-construction phase and sold after that, meaning that the period in which they bought pre-construction, like the building was being built, right? Didn't count towards that because the ownership date is when the building registers. So it probably skewed the number lower a bit, but nonetheless, still very good returns. Now here's where the data gets kind of juicy and gossipy because everyone wants to see like lost porn for lack of a better term. You can see in this chart over here, only 6% of them lost money of the ones that sold in October, meaning that they bought for more than what they sold it for. And you know, obviously this is before land transfer tax and any commissions, right? And 1% of them broke even and, you know, basically lost money because of transaction costs. The rest of them essentially had gains. Now the average loss was about $60,000 before transaction costs, which is pretty significant because when you factor in transaction costs, there's a chance it's almost six figures, right? Now here's the kicker. And I've always said this, it may date back to my videos from like way back, like five, six years ago. If you are buying real estate to build wealth, it's essentially a get rich slow scheme, not a get rich quick scheme. And you can see in this chart that the people who sold and had losses essentially only held onto their property for two and a half years. I've always said, if you're buying real estate, you should plan to hold on to it for at least five years. And this chart here shows it wild, right? Now, you know, I always think I was a big geek number and because now I have all this data that's, you know, at my disposal, <laughs> I pulled a lot of the data and I put it on a plot chart here just to show you a couple of things. Um, let me explain this chart because it's a little bit more complicated, right? So this chart here essentially shows the appreciation each condo got per year. And if the dot, is below the zero line, it means that it lost money. Now, if it's above the zero line, it means it made money, 
right? So you can see that when I outline this chart here, so it's easily digestible, the data set shows that the only condos that were sold that lost money were the ones that held for less than five years, which is wild, right? I've been saying this, but like, here's the data that kind of backs it up. Crazy, right? And any condo that was held for more than five years essentially appreciated fairly well and they've made some money on the exit, right? Now, this is not a data set for everything, but it's a pretty good amount of data. And you see those like crazy dots, uh, you know, with crazy appreciation before the five-year point. Those are the ones I was telling you basically that they bought in pre-construction and then, you know, I would say like the mid 2010s and they probably sold a little bit afterwards, but it didn't count the duration in which it was built, which could be like five, six years. So the whole time could be a little bit longer than that, right? So after seeing all of this, where do we go from here? Well, from my perspective, there's a ton of active listings that needs to be absorbed, meaning that prices aren't likely trending upwards anytime soon. November tends to be a fairly slow month for new listings. So I suspect that we'll probably see an increase of the month of inventory only by the fact that I think sales will slow, not necessarily because we have a lot more listings come online. And then definitely in December, we'll probably level off with some people maybe taking it off the market, right? So I would say of all of the active listings right now, what I was curious about was how many of them were like desperate investors to sell, right? And I would classify the desperate investors to sell as someone who's selling a property tenanted. And it's not the ideal situation, but you can kind of put it in that classification. And you can see in this chart over here that about a third of the properties available right now are tenanted. Now, keep in mind, many investors do sell vacant if the tenant moves out because it allows them to stage it and sell it for more. And this was the data I showed you, about 70% of the properties that sold were either vacant or like, you know, owner occupied. So this data that I'm seeing right now for investor uh, tenanted kind of condos is a little bit higher than the norm, but it's not a huge amount. So the challenge right now is because essentially one in 10 condos like in the downtown area are selling. How badly are those desperate investors going to drop their price and exit? And how badly is it going to affect the building that they're selling in? That is what I do not know because I don't have the financials for every you know, unique situation because everyone's situation is different, right? I've been saying that for a while. Anyways, that's a wrap. And I hope this sheds a little bit of light on the downtown condo space right now. I know it's not looking great, but if you are concerned about your property, if you own one in the downtown condo space, you could book a call with me using the link right here to chat about like what next steps there are or if you should be concerned because you know some people may not need to be concerned. Anyways, hope this helps. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that I'm done watching this video, I think you should check out this video. And you know what? Why don't you check out this video too?